So okay, everyone, um, uh, a very warm welcome to my channel once again. So today I will be doing uh, the third session of our XFLR 5 How to Guide series, uh, and that will be about effect of high lift devices. So as uh, usual, first of all, before we really uh, dive into the tutorial, let's uh, have some basic knowledge or the fundamentals of high lift devices. We will start with the trailing edge uh, high lift device, which is called as a uh, flap. So that will be uh, using um, trailing edge flap uh, in XFLR5. There are different types of flaps or systems for trailing edge high lift devices like plain flap, split flap, or single slotted flap. Uh, but for XFLR5 tutorial, I'll be just using the plain flap because I don't think uh, you can even model the slotted flap or split flap. If you guys know if there is any way of modeling then please let me know and write it in the comment section so this here is on the right side um, is a lift polar so you have angle of attack on the horizontal axis vertical side you have a lift coefficient and it says that if uh, you have um, clean airfoil uh, the lift air, uh, polar is looking like this and by just adding a plane flap or increasing the camber of your airfoil in other words we can see at the trailing edge so it is hinged about approximately 80 percent of your wing cord or your airfoil cord and just by increasing the camber of your airfoil you will get a higher lift because you will get more circulation and uh, the airfoil will produce more lift so but on the other hand you will you will be getting a, a considerable amount of increase in your cl max it can be seen here with this delta cl max so maximum lift coefficient but uh, on the other side uh, you can even fly higher but there is an increase in alpha at cl max we can see that so this can be compensated if you instead of a plane flap you use a slotted flap so by using a slotted flap which is shown here you will be having kind of a jet um, mechanism so uh, with this slot there is a new or, or a fresh fluid coming in which will increase the momentum of the fluid over the flap and by doing so, uh, you can also further go onwards uh, for higher lift and also at higher angles of attack. Okay, so as mentioned, we will just take into account the plane flap for our trailing edge flap. The procedure will be as follows. You start uh, XFLR5 and you go to the foil and X-foil direct analysis. If you have already chosen your air file, obviously, and uh, then you will go to the menu design set flap or you could use a shortcut key and then you choose your leading edge flap or trailing edge flap or the combination of both and by the way for our tutorial i'll be taking or touching all these three aspects so well, we start with trailing edge flap and then we will move on to the leading edge flap or slat uh, and then the combination of uh, both trailing edge and leading edge uh, flap yeah, and once you choose this, uh, there will be a window. You will say, I wanted to use just a trailing edge flap or both, and then you define angle and hinge position for the airfoil. So let's start now um, with our tutorial. So I'll be using for the demonstration purposes here Naka 0012. So we go once again to foil, Naka foils, and then 0012. And as we know that we'll be always sticking with this number of points throughout our tutorial series it's a good practice so we can see that it's about 150 points we go to x file direct analysis and as in the uh, previous tutorials um, also in the 2d airfoil analysis so i will stick with the reynolds number of 6 million and it's an incompressible flow uh, with a mach number zero we will not take into account any compressibility effects so we define uh, our mach number Reynolds number, sorry. So once you define that, we will stick with the default values. Not 12, 9 is the default value for the free transition case. <coughs> so, so let's go from minus 10 to somewhere around, um, somewhere around 30, if you can. Or let's, let's, let's see if we can go to 20. Okay, so let's start first of all for our clean airfoil computations. We will see how it really performs. 
so now we can see that it has already performed and it's all um, finished with the conversions now um, there are um, actually two different ways either you go back to your foil direct foil design and go there select your desired airfoil and click right click on that and then you click set flap yeah from here you're going to also do that but there is another or a quick way by just remaining even in the your direct airfoil analysis mode you go here you go to design and you just select your desired airfoil where you wanted to choose or design a flap or slat for that go to the set flap and as i mentioned we'll be starting with trailing edge flap so I will start with about 15 degrees so these are the default conditions and normally it is uh, the one which is used uh, even in, in practice so 80% of your wing cord we can see that there it is hinged about this point and it's like uh, rotated with an angle of 15 degrees and positive is down so if you wanted to go like upward deflected upward so and then you can see it's an upward effect so what we are just taking into account the effect of uh, plus 15 degrees once you are happy with that then press ok so XFLR will ask you if you want to rename or override the existing names uh, obviously we want to rename we will be using uh, deflection angle so the delta increment or F delta for flaps that will be 15 so that's it now we have it so and you can see now it's already automatically selected so we have our clean airfoil now we have our airfoil with then the flap deflection of 15 degrees we'll use the same parameters we just need to define the analysis and we will do uh, complete polar calculations and now we can see so let's zoom in on the second one for the visuals, uh, better visualization, change the colors and so that we can even see better. And I will just uh, change the lift for both cases so we can actually see better. Um, we can see that, um, as mentioned also in the theory, that the effect of high lift devices that can be seen considerably here. So, if there is a maximum CL in this region, the maximum CL is uh, reduced. Uh, not in terms of uh, number but uh, at the angle of attack so you can see that at the maximum CL is maybe somewhere around at this angle 18 degrees or 90 degrees but now the maximum CL can be achieved around 16 degrees so there is a decrease in the alpha max or the alpha or the angle of attack at maximum lift coefficient but on the other hand the complete uh, slope of your lift polar is shifted upwards with an, uh, with an increment of delta CL uh, so overall so this really confirms with the with the theoretical uh, observation which is already shown here now uh, let's see uh, the results um, for our uh, case so once again um, so again this is again in our direct comparison between clean airfoil and uh, deflected uh, airfoil with a flap angle of 15 degrees right? we just did that so we can say that the trailing edge flap actually causes a shift and increase in lift but on the other side it also causes an increase in the drag so you have to find a compromise obviously um, uh, there is uh, increase in also drag but uh, we can also see that uh, the lift uh, is achieved increase in lift is achieved by the use of uh, high lift devices so it's kind of having a positive effect of the on the lift yeah. So if we re really do uh, a direct comparison between a clean airfoil and um, an airfoil with a flap angle of 15 degrees, approximately a 10 degree angle of attack. So just for the comparison, I have plotted here the pressure distribution. So the blue one is the one with the flap angle with the flap and the one with the orange color is the clean airfoil. Uh, we can see that uh, there is an, a considerable amount of increase in the suction peep and there is almost a delta CP of about four units, right? And this is really a, quite a, quite an improvement in terms of, of, of lift increase. And uh, this effect, um, it's kind of artifact. It's because of coming off the hinge location, right? 
so we can see this is it's kind of a peak it's kind of a sharp change in your geometry which is coming locally and it's it's i mean it is expected already that you can get some such a such an effect okay so now um, we will move uh, to the effect of the high lip devices in terms of uh, taking into account the leading edge flaps so uh, you can also use once again um, uh, the leading edge flaps or you can also say is at slot uh, slats but uh, for this tutorial as in case of trailing edge we will be just sticking with the leading edge plane flap so in theory on the right side we can say once again uh, the polar of a lift uh, coefficient if you have a clean airfoil and compared to this if you have a leading edge flap right uh, you will get an increase in your cl but there is a decrease in the slope but on the other hand you can fly higher so there is an increase in lift there is an increase in alpha cl max right and um, for our xflr5 tutorial we have chosen um, a slat or uh, a leading edge flap angle of 25 degrees so how we did that or how we can do that i can show you guys so you just go once again from design go to set flap and we say leading edge flap angle of 20 25 degrees so just go and you change it once again you have to give a new name so it's a slat so ds minus 25 and do again complete polar with the same settings you just need to initialize for the new airfoil and then do a complete analysis so once you do a polar and uh, it is finished now we can have a look um, direct look if we go once again to the all set of all the polars uh, let's zoom in select the one which is uh, of interest for us it's self versus cl so let's change the color first of all black one for the new calculations we can see it's really almost um, uh, lying a uh, little bit uh, below uh, the clean airfoil computations right this polar which is the one we've already seen so um, if we increase further um, even i would say we can go even to 30 degree angle of attack and see to add some more points into that and let's see um, how far we can actually go with this with the maximum lift so it can be observed that we achieve a maximum lift compared to the clean airfoil and we also gain with a higher uh, cl max uh, um, we have increased an in angle of attack which is once again confirmation or um, validation or verification whatever you wanted to say uh, with the theory okay so um, last but not the least um, we will be using now the combination of both so leading and trailing edge flap so i already did the computations with this one i will just show you the results now uh, it's again the same airfoil and i have used a slat angle of 25 degrees for the leading edge flap and trailing edge flap of 20 degrees yeah so these are the results let's make it a little bit bigger these are the results uh, which i have achieved that combination of leaning and trailing edge it causes an increase in your lift uh, but on the other side so this is the actual complete polar uh, but there is a decrease in alpha cl max uh, but uh, we can also see that uh, for us of uh, great interest was like um, the increase in your maximum lift and this has been achieved so one can even see that proximity at angle of um, alpha max uh, with the combination of both which is in green one is um, about 2.1 or something like this uh, delta and then this is the one the blue one is with a flap angle of 15 degrees and the one um, uh, with the slat angle just with leading edge uh, flap is the one with this green color and if we really see the zoomed in view in the next slide we can have a much better picture so we can have we can we still have a considerable decrease compare uh, increase in our cl uh, if we have a direct comparison with the trailing edge leading edge flap combination compared to the uh, polar of just a trailing edge flap uh, so we can see that there is still an increase and also if we do a direct comparison between uh, the clean airfoil which is this one we're getting cl max and uh, compared to the one uh, green one which is this one uh, with the slat or the leading edge flap angle of 25 degrees 
uh, that uh, the maximum CL is achieved. Not only that, and anger alpha C alpha at uh, CL max is also increased. So if we have um, about this point for the clean air foil, um, maximum lift coefficient, and if you go further here, we are getting lower. So there is an increase of delta alpha at this particular angle of attack. So um, yeah, I think um, from from high lift point of view. A devices point of view in in comparison to uh, the clean airfoil xflr5 is um, also reproducing the similar results as observed also in theory uh, or in literature uh, so i think um, that's it from from now um, now it's your turn uh, if uh, you like this video give a thumbs up and uh, give your remarks uh, in the comment section and I will encourage you to do your own exercises um, if uh, you are interested in designing any um, high lift system or kind of preliminary design for your sailplane or for, for your uh, research project, whatever you are working on. So, yeah, I think that's it from now. Um, so still stay tuned for my next video that I will be doing with part uh, four. Um, about transition modeling with XFLR5. Uh, it will be a basic introduction uh, to see and I will be doing some comparison with uh, some airfoils uh, having experimental data available. So I would say then bye-bye um, from now my side and don't forget to support my channel. And last but not the least I am also making now in my playlist section, there is will be another new addition of new section of uh, productivity or some tips and tricks uh, for data analysis for, for, for science or some other stuff, very useful stuff coming up. So please keep an eye on that too. So thank you. Bye bye. Take care. So that's it from now. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe my channel. Stay tuned for new incoming videos. Thank you.